Okay, everyone, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today we have a really cool episode for you with something pretty rare um, from the brand Eterna. Uh, a little bit about the brand. Eterna was founded back in 1856. They are, of course, Swiss made. Their claim to fame is that they are, you know, the origin of the Swiss giant ETA, <laughs> the movement manufacturer. So, pretty cool story and lineage there, of course. Now, a little bit about the type of watch. This is a chronograph. Now some key characteristics and common design language when looking at a chronograph. Some of the things you're going to see is of course external pushers to activate timing functions. You know you're going to have multiple subdials that measure elapsed time and you're often going to see additional scales on the dial you know depending on kind of the sub, the sub genre whether it's you know a pilot's watch, an engineer's watch, or you know a race car driver's uh, watch. So depending on kind of the theme, you're gonna see different things. Um, on this watch, the theme is definitely very specific. Uh, so it's something that I think is pretty special. We have here for this review, the Chronograph Limited Edition 1938. Um, it's basically inspired by the Art Deco watches of the 1930s, and I think this thing really sings. The retail price on it is 2,500 bucks. Uh, actually, I'd say 2,500 euro. Um, and but you can find them for around 990 to 1800, depending on where you find them today. They are a limited edition, so there are a limited number uh, that were produced. But uh, I was able to find this at a pretty awesome bargain. So voila, here it is on the channel. And then um, I actually have it on an aftermarket bracelet from uh, Watch Gecko. This comes on a rubber strap with a pretty nice deployment, uh, with a deployment clasp, but I think uh, this bracelet is really just perfect for it, so that's why I mounted it here. Of course, it had to be different. Uh, the case size is 36 millimeters, which normally is pretty small, but when you're looking at a square watch, um, you know, 36 is not uh, that small at all. I think it's actually a nice sweet spot. So let's go ahead and zoom out, get this in hand, and take a look at some of the other specs. So the thickness on this piece is actually uh, 13 millimeters high. It's made out of stainless steel. You know, it has a mixture of brushed and polished finishes. And I mean, this thing has just got some gorgeous bevels and fastening all over it. Um, so the light and the execution, I mean, the, the break from polished to brushed, you know, it's just really, really high quality. And then you can see on that great sapphire there, that thing is just nice and proud of the rest of the case. Of course, yeah, it makes you worry about, um, you know, chipping or nicking it, but Sapphire is pretty strong. So, and it's not like I'm going to wear this, you know, just, you know, as a sports watch, it's not what it is at all. It's definitely more dressy and more of a, a novelty. So, um, I definitely going to wear this with great care. Now, uh, as far as, you know, we already talked about the crystals, raised and beveled. The crown is unsigned, which I thought was kind of an interesting choice, but also kind of part of that minimal aesthetic. It has really cool little square pushers there versus the traditional kind of round buttons. Um, so I thought that was a really nice touch. It was, of course, ties in to the overall shape. Um, the crown, of course, doesn't screw down. Uh, the movement is a Swiss-made uh, ETA 2894-2, which is basically a 2892 with a modular chronograph. Um, we've seen a similar um, movement on the channel previously uh, in the Fortis uh, Typhoon, um, sorry, Tycoon chronograph, and basically it's it's just you know um, this is ETA's own version of it, so they built their own modular chronograph versus using the Dubois Dupra. Um, a module sitting on top. Um, this is kind of their own in-house one and I gotta say the movement action is pretty nice. You'll see a lot of misinformation uh, printed about this piece. You'll probably find a couple listings that say this has a 2824 inside. Well clearly it doesn't <laughs> um, because the 2824 is not a um, it's not a chronograph and let's say 
they that they're you know oh well you can put a module on it this is uh, an ETA movement this isn't a Dubois de Pra so um, and basically through kind of searching the internet and and you know the archives I was able to find it and confirm that this is in fact a uh, 2894 so pretty cool and I you know the the action on the chronograph is actually very different in feel than than the uh, than the other the the DD movement so it's very solid let me see if you guys can hear this so as you can see chrono hand is going we have the running seconds uh, here on the right and then on the left we have the 30 minute counter the 30 minute counter is it doesn't go like a uh, 7750 uh, that uh, has a dedicated uh, you know dedicated chronograph movement um, as you can see it actually is a running counter so as this is coming around it's actually moving simultaneously versus waiting to cross over the 12 and tick over so really solid feeling uh, action there which is really nice um, and, and a surprise I really wasn't expecting that considering this is a modular movement so pleasantly surprised on that standpoint now uh, the case back is solid and engraved and as you can see it's definitely you know pretty plain back there um, just shows limited edition shows which one you know they built uh, 1938 they built 1938 of these this is number 64 um, so really minimal on the case back there but still really nicely executed which is nice and of course the hands are you know that gold polish and then you have that rich uh, dial with the kind of chocolatey gold uh, color scheme there so let's go ahead and get this on wrist So one thing I forgot to mention is that this does have 22 millimeter wide lugs um, and that you wouldn't think that you'd see 22 millimeter lugs on a 36 but again when it's a square watch a 36 seems a lot bigger. So it's funny uh, this watch to me I kind of think of it as like an art deco Apple watch because it just has a very similar profile. To the Apple Watch, right? Um, but it's just a much more, of course, old school design there, um, which, I, you know, it has sharper edges instead of the rounded. I mean, this thing is just, to me, is very excellent at what it does. I mean, just finding a square uh, mechanical chronograph is hard enough um, at this price point. So being able to find one that has this great dial and these bevels and the history of course with the turn of the brand in general I think is definitely a nice find so if you guys can find these out there on eBay um, I definitely recommend um, snagging them up while you can at these prices are currently going at so of course uh, I guess we could talk a little bit you know although there's no loom or anything like that um, this is 5 bar or 50 meter water resistance which is pretty standard um, you know, uh, other than that, you know, it's, it's a pretty plain piece there it, as far as, you know, um, features wise, it's very straightforward. It tells the time, um, and you're going to definitely need some light around cause there's no loom on this bad boy whatsoever. So there aren't really any model variants and, you know, I guess comparable models wise, there's really not anything out there, at least at this price point. Um, so we can skip straight to the bottom line here on this guy. And I will say that this is just a really, uh, it's just an art deco classic. I mean, this thing just has legs, the lines on it. I mean, it's just a gorgeous piece. I think, uh, even if you're not into watches, again, this is just one of those ones that cross over. You can see it and you can tell that it's quality. Um, even when it's not on the bracelet, but I, you know, I think the bracelet does add to the time period and just kind of adds a certain feeling of luxury and richness uh, to the watch uh, that you really only get when you have it on bracelet. So 
I think it looks great on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, although it doesn't have any loom, one thing we can do is get some video of this in some lower light conditions. So, you know, I wanted to, I normally do this now during the, um, during the loom shots, but considering that this doesn't have any loom, I think it would still actually be pretty cool to show this piece in lower light situations, just so you can get an idea of what this is going to look like when you don't have bright studio lights on it and just kind of more natural lighting. So as you can see there, really beautiful. I mean, you can, this really helps kind of highlight the contrast of the dial. I know that the studio lights wash it out a bit. So as you can see the gold on the black, it just gives it such a nice warm feeling. Those contours, those bevels, as you can see how sharp they are, the way they light up. Okay. Try to get as many angles on it as I can here. So you guys can kind of get a, a more realistic idea of what this looks like in natural light. Just take my time here. I do like the way it transitions as well to give you kind of an idea what this is going to be like on the wrist while you're out on the move, out on the go versus just underneath studio lights that are probably highlighting every little imperfection and scratch or, you know, speck of dust on the watch. So, all right, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this piece uh, in the comments below. Um, are you guys liking it? Do you think it's just a little bit too old fashioned? Do you think it's too big? Um, I think, you know, considering that it's a chronograph, it's the right size. Um, and I think it's a really cool and interesting piece. Um, are there, is there anything out there like this that I don't know about? I mean, this is one of those ones where I didn't know to look for this until I stumbled across it. So I would definitely love to know if you guys have any suggestions of kind of those off color, off the wall finds that you guys have come across, um, you know, that are just really, you know, something that stands out and um, is just a kind of a find that's out there. So for me, I wanted to share this find with you Go ahead and share your kind of um, obscure finds with me down in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Bye.